Here we go. Okay. All right, everyone. Happy to have all of you uh, coaches here with us this morning uh, for our Orange County webinar. And today we have two amazing guests. One of uh, most of you know very, very well. She is my partner in crime here in programming where we get to keep her for another few weeks. But Ms. Vanya Kuntz is here hosting Coaches TED Tech Talks. And we'll be seeing her once a quarter. So we're very much looking forward to her programs. And we have a guest with us today also, um, all the way from Nice, who just told us how he got to go swimming already this morning. Um, and this is Olivier Malafronte, and we are so excited to have both of them on our panel today to be sharing with us about how, the AI, how AI, artificial intelligence, is going to be affecting coaching, which we consider the human part of coaching to be so important. So this is a very, very top of mind discussion, and we're happy to have both of you guys here today. Thanks so much for taking the time and joining us. Thank you, Karen, uh, for opening up for us. I am so happy to uh, be back with my special group. Um, I moved it from ICF LA to ICF Orange County and uh, we tweaked the name. But the main purpose of this group and for inviting different types of speakers and founders of software that they're specifically for coaching is to raise the awareness and learn about opportunities and think about what the future will bring to our industry. It's very important to be prepared, as we all know that, and, um, and I want to make this space and give this opportunity to our members and uh, guests uh, who join me today and in the next uh, few months until the end of the year um, to to have this conversation going and um, I would like to hear from all of the attendees uh, whoever is joining the call um, please type in the chat box is there any particular thing you want to learn today where you're calling from and what brought you here um, we just want to learn about you a little bit more before we start. You can That'd use the chat great. box. Yes, you can use the chat box uh, bottom on the right. And if you have any particular questions, you can use the Q&A. Yeah, it's just between our three panelists. We've got, you know, Northern California, Southern California, and France. So curious to see where everyone's calling in from today. Yeah, I see some familiar names. Hi, Paul. Thank you for joining. Marianne, too. Lourdes. Um, hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Hi, Vicky. This is Vicky. I'm dealing, in from, dealing from San Diego, and I'm looking forward to learn more about how I can use technology with my coaching clients. How AI... Marian, how to use AI to our benefit rather than to our detriment? Ooh, mm -hmm. that's a good right? one. That is, that that's is a good one. Yeah, that's one of the fears, Marian, I think we all have. Vanya, I'm going to stop my video so you two can have full stage here. And I'm excited. Good luck, you guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for who sh whoever shared with us. And uh, please, anytime you have questions, type it in the chat box. Um, we will start with um, a little introduction of Oliver. He will uh, tell us a little bit about his background and he has a background, solid background in coaching um, before he decides to create his startup. Um, and uh, then he will uh, present what his vision and um, value proposition is for his um, product that he developed. And then we will go into a conversation with you. So um, thank you for joining me, Oliver. 
I'm so happy that you say yes to my proposition and let's see what you have for us. Great, thank you. Thank you, Vanya. Um, I hope you, you all hear me well. Is that okay, uh, Vanya? Yeah, we hear okay. you very well. Great. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, I'm joining, I'm joining this call in this webinar because I think it's important to, um, to share, you know, with coaches and uh, to talk about how technology is going to impact, help, support and augment uh, the coaching industry. Um, so maybe a little bit of, of background um, about me. So I'm, I'm about to turn 30 um, this month. So it's kind of a, of a big time. Um, but yeah, basically back in 2013, um, I was you know, already in my entre entrepreneurship journey in the digital uh, world. And I was back in 2013, I was you know, making sense, uh, searching for making sense you know, about um, many of the personal and professional challenges um, that, that, have, you know, that was happening to me um, in work and personal life. And so um, I had the chance then in 2014, when I was coming back home in France, um, after living in Asia, uh, I had the chance to integrate an institute specializing in coaching, um, built in partnership with the School of Robert Dilts in generative coaching. And so I went through a whole uh, one year uh, professional training um, in coaching and got my first certification at this time in 2014. So going through the, the coaching certification, um, basically this is where I've, you know, I've understood, I mean, I've, I've understood how coaching was, was helpful, uh, was powerful. And through this coaching training, as I was already in a, um, an entrepreneur, um, for me, the, I basically had a visceral idea. Um, and this idea, this, you know, this wish to contribute to our, to our society was to democratize coaching. And when I say democratize coaching is share coaching with anyone in the world at any time, um, make it accessible because coaching is such a powerful tool that I thought it was important to share it to empower people, help people go through challenges um, and increase the learning about themselves. So that's, that's how in 2014, I, I started to, to build this idea. And then I started to work on it um, in 2015 um, starting to put myself, you know, in a, in motion to meet the partners, um, you know, build a team, et cetera, et cetera. So the goal behind is to make coaching available um, for people to, you know, to be able to move through challenges at in anywhere, anytime um, in an affordable way, because that's also um, the goal with technology is to make coaching is to educate more people and to make it available. So I would suggest, um, Vanya, do you want me to share maybe a little bit about the presentation and share about yes, what is please. behind Pocket Confidence? Okay. Yes. So we would, would be great if you can share your screen in the presentation that you prepared and um, just give us more background about uh, Pocket Confidence. Exactly. So I would do that. Maybe I would take about you know five minutes, um, five, ten minutes, and then I think I would take a pause and I will be able to um, chat with the, with the participants and uh, answer questions. So yeah. I'm going to share my screen. Can you tell yes. me? Yes, yes. Can you? Uh, yeah, we, we see it perfectly. Full screen. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, here we go. So the purpose, the purpose behind Pocket Confidence behind this technology is to help people develop their mindsets for well-being and success. We have decided to create this technology to enable anyone and any time to have access to a powerful approach and method of coaching that on our side, on our side is about listening to people and asking good questions. So I want to make sure that we, we, you understand the way we are um, going into coaching with technology on our side. And for us, you know, we know there are many different types of coaching and that's, that's fine. On our side, coaching is about listening to people and asking good questions in order to create um, the opportunity for people to step back, learn, and create more options for themselves. So we are not going to, we're not going into coaching with technology um, with the mindset of 
uh, giving advice, providing solutions. And so we are focusing on the learning aspect of things that are, that's why I'm talking about listening um, and asking good questions. So let's say these are our two core um, ethical pillars and core principles of coaching that we're putting into technology. So today, the, the way we are starting with Pocket Confidence, we are uh, building a self-coaching, the way we are positioning, the way we are calling this is a self-coaching tool. So we are making coaching, actually the questioning methods and the questioning techniques, we're making this available uh, behind a web interface, behind, behind a chatbot interface. So the user experience, as you can see in the screen, for instance, can be on laptops, on phones, on tablets, and basically uh, you are interacting with the chatbot, with the conversational robot that is going to ask you useful questions and help you build your own conversations. In which conversations you're going to move from a present state to a desired state, uh, to a resource state, and then formulate your outcomes and then project yourself to the future so that you can um, put in place the thinking, the action, and you can put in place your outcome into your vision of the future. So this is, this is how we are making coaching available um, through technology. So today everything is written because it's, um, it's a written chat. Um, of course, we have um, the project and the plan to move to uh, voice interfaces, but it's not yet the case. So today we focus on, on, um, on writing. And the way we are position, positioning on the market today, we are addressing the self-coaching tool first um, to the world of um, the enterprise. So we're talking to managers and the teams um, and we are calling the self-coaching. And so basically what, you know, the, the problem that we are addressing is this one. The thing is today, um, the workforce is expecting much more coaching than in the past and much more relation uh, with, the, with, the, with the managers, with the team, with the leaders. The big issue is that um, frontline managers, middle managers, and many other leaders um, don't necessarily have all the time, all the skills and the budgets to be able to coach the entire team and to coach the entire people. So this basically results in a loss of productivity. It costs $500 billion per year. So it's a, it's a pretty big cost. And so the question behind this problem is how can we scale coaching and make it available to everyone at any time? And so that's how we, we came in with a solution that is self-coaching in real time with the robots. So we are finding here two of the visuals that we had uh, on the previous visuals. So it's the, the web interface with the chatbot interface for the real-time conversations with what we call the users. So users can be um, team members, employees, or managers. And we also build um, a dashboard for analytics uh, so that we can give organizations and we can give managers the ability to understand um, the usage of the technology and the adoption of it. Of course, we are not building such um, a dashboard um, to track people because the idea is not, is not to track people. Um, we are actually encrypting and depersonalizing data um, and we are not sharing the user, uh, the user conversations with the managers or with the, or with the organizations because we want to keep confidentiality as a first priority. And in this technology, basically, we focus on generating questions, generating dialogues uh, that will um, question people in order to help people step back, um, develop self-awareness, critical thinking, um, make better choices, and uh, really increase um, the knowledge about themselves so that they can create more options for themselves and understand by, by themselves um, the direction they need to take. So this is, this is our approach of coaching with technology. So that's why we talk a lot about question and we are um, using existing research and we're right now actually creating our first uh, research project um, focused on questioning uh, with technology. Let me move um, this part here. So basically, like I was saying, we, we are talking to leaders, to managers, because this is our main um, and first targets. But um, through the last year, and actually the last 1.5 year, we also had you know, a lot of requests from coaches themselves. And we understood 
because coaches work with teams, coaches work with leaders and with organizations, we understand that this tool can also be used easily by coaches. And this is the case today because we are also enabling coaches to work uh, with such technology so that they can actually use the self-coaching tool um, to train people and to increase, basically develop their capacities for um, the sense of priorities, uh, to set their goals, to better communicate and to increase their confidence. And you will see here, I'm going to move to um, the different use cases so you will understand um, where and when we can use it. So today we, we started to focus on, on decisions and priorities, but we're step-by-step step moving towards more use cases. So for instance, if you think about um, an organization or team, you may have new people coming in. So for the onboarding people, um, this technology can, use, can be used for people to set their goals, uh, to understand how they want to position in the team, and basically to talk about the, the vision, the aspirations within the organization. Uh, but we can also talk about difficult conversations. So we've been seeing that our solution with, uh, uh, with users has been pretty useful so far, for instance, to help people prepare before they have difficult conversations. Uh, because uh, when talking with a robot, uh, basically you don't have any judgment behind because you're not talking uh, to a human. So it eases um, self-expression. It enables people to talk about what matters to them. And because they talk with the robots, they're able to put words on what makes sense to them and what's important. And so they can see their own dialogue and they can, they, they are basically in front of themselves. And so they prepare the conversations that we want to have with others. Other use cases can be also a personal well-being. Uh, when people, for instance, have a certain uh, workload and want to start, you know, uh, feeding better with themselves and prioritizing uh, their well-being into their daily life. But we can also use such technologies, for instance, um, in, you know, for pre and post training uh, purposes, before trainings or before any kind of learning events and after learning events to help people um, identify what stand out into a training, what was a most making sense for them and how, you know, how they can take this into a personal outcome and a personal action for a better anchoring and integration of the learning. And the last use cases, the, the last use case I'm going to mention here um, is about preparing and following on meetings, whether it's in between coaching sessions or in between important meetings into uh, a team setup uh, for an organization. So here, for instance, with this, um, with this, with this slide, what I, the message that I want to provide is um, We've been looking at the stats, for instance, on you know, a first um, usage and cohort of 2,000 users. And when we look at the best cohort of users, what's very interesting is to see you know, with coaching technologies and with the coaching um, chatbots, how, you know, what kind of metrics we can get. And here uh, we can see that, for instance, more than half of the users uh, come, back on the, uh, come back on the conversations by themselves. They usually come back for a two to three conversations on a monthly basis. Um, we can see that more than a third of the users share their outcome uh, with people outside of the technology because, of course, the way we're building technology is not to keep people uh, on the technology only, but also to give them um, the option and the, and the possibility to share their outcomes with people uh, that they trust outside the technology so that they can share the inside, that they can receive, um, they can receive, they can be shared, you know, with experiences, um, and potential, you know, uh, mentoring if they share the outcomes with existing mentors. So the technology is not go is going to focus on question people and help them to figure things out on their own. And then the technology will help these people connect with, uh, with other people outside uh, of the, the digital interface. The average conversation time today with us is about 20 minutes. Um, of course, the, the, the research that we're making and the work that we're doing is um, is basically aiming at decreasing uh, this time in the conversations to potentially 15 minutes to 10, to 10 minutes because we want to keep the impact of coaching conversations but make them very you know, um, accessible, um, easily available uh, and time bound so that people can use it um, as soon as they need um, in the daily work life. And the rating that we got so far is 7.8 out of 10, so almost eight um, out of 10. And we have here um, two interesting uh, verbatim and feedback um, 
that, that we can look at that gives us an idea of what people are achieving or what they, what they, what they like with such a technology. And the first is um, I completed a project within 24 hours instead of five days. This use case, for instance, was um, with a director of an organization um, in California, um, transforming her organization and actually managing um, about 20 people in her team. And so um, one morning where she was overwhelmed by all the things that she had to do, when she used the technology, the, the self-coaching tool, she was able to understand how she was perceiving her projects because she was thinking, you know, that it would take her uh, maybe five days, uh, five days to finish and going through the coaching conversation and training herself on questioning her present situation, desired situation and the resource. She identified, um, she identified the resource and she identified, you know, the outcome that she needed to put in place. And out of the conversation, actually things become much easier and she was able to achieve her project within 24 hours instead of five days. And for the other verba team, it gives us an, another kind of, another color of, um, of the, the appreciation, if I may say, of a user that um, made this technology part of his daily routine. Um, and he says, it is such a handy swift army knife. And this person is actually an Australian person. He's a professional uh, working with many different client projects and the 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 the, sp the specificity of this user is that he needs to be proactive and he needs to to make himself creative uh, for <clears throat> all the different projects that he's running i'm going to move to the next slide um i wanted to you know i wanted to talk about this for for a few seconds because i think it's important um this is a report uh, made by the world economic forum is the 2022 skills outlook. I think what's very important for us to look at is the difference between the growing and declining skills. And if we look at the blue side on the left side, we see that the growing skills um, or skills such as emotional intelligence, creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, they are all the skills um, or human capabilities that coaching is usually putting in place or training um, in the conversations. So I think that you know this was important to make the point because um, when we think about the democratization of coaching and when we think about a self-coaching tool such as ours, we can project um, the ability to train more people on developing and reinforcing the skills uh, that are going to be the skills of the future. So that's the, the message that I wanted to convey through this slide. And I may have two other slides uh, you know, before posing. Um, so here this slide is presenting the, a part of the team, so the, the founders. So we have myself, um, Ayla Redin, that is British American. She's also a certified coach. Um, she's been spending her life in between um, education and corporate. So she has you know, 30 years in business and she's been doing coaching um, for about the last 15 to 20 years. And Nikita Lukanet is our CTO. He has a background in um, technology, in neuroscience, and he's been spending 10 years uh, in human computer interaction. Of course, we surround ourselves uh, with a board of advisors. We only have you know, three mentioned here, uh, but we basically have 10 people around us today with um, coaching expertise, uh, psychology expertise, human capital, software development expertise, and uh, financial funding and strategy expertise. Very briefly touching about, um, about confidentiality when I was talking about the product and the dashboard that we give to organization. But I think that here, again, it's, it's very important for me to mention um, about the, the privacy, the security, um, and the, the, the ethical approach that we have about this technology. So not only uh, we take very seriously uh, the protection of data with privacy and confidentiality, but in the same time, we're also developing you know, a whole ethical part of, uh, of technology with coaching because we're developing a listening and questioning technology more than an influencing and advising technology. And I think that is going to be pretty much yeah, all. Um, if you go you know, on YouTube or on our websites, you will be able to see um, a few users' uh, feedback. Um, so I can only show here, you know, the titles and the, and the pictures, but I invite you, for instance, to look at Pocket Confidence on YouTube or to go on our website and to listen to what people say after they use Pocket Confidence. 
And that's pretty much everything. You know, our goal is to empower people with technology and I would be more than happy now to uh, take some questions and share about, you know, how I see the, the industry evolving. So I'm going to pause here. I'm going to hand over to Banya and to the people. <laughs> Thank you. We had a few uh, questions and comments during your uh, presentation, and I will start okay. with that, even though I believe the Marian question, what will the role of human coach be in this particular driven model? Uh, I think you touch on that uh, quite a bit, but maybe you should uh, elaborate more. So the the role of coaches with this uh, with this approach of technology, right? Yeah. Okay. So the role the, the role that we see of coaches here is coaches, for instance, may want so they can use this technology before, during, and after coaching sessions. So you know, let's take a few examples. One coach, for instance, wants to um, educate more people. Uh, he's going to coach maybe a fifty people or hundred people in an organization. And not all the people um, know about coaching. So using such a technology is um, an efficient way to give a large group of people a first taste, a first touch of coaching because it's a real-time coaching conversation. Um, so it's basically a, a learning by doing. So that's, that's what could happen, for instance, before uh, a human coach go and coach people. He provides the technology to, the, to a group of people to have them start questioning themselves and understanding how to move from a present state to a desired state, formulate an outcome and project themselves into the future. Um, what else? During a coaching session, for instance, one of a, um, a coach that is uh, in Australia uses Pocket Confident a lot, for instance, inside the human coaching as the first 15 or 20 minutes. He's using the technology to put the coachee um, in front of the virtual coach, the, the self-coaching tool, as we call it. And the coach is, the human coach is taking a, the position of a meta, right? So he's basically stepping back and he's observing the coachee going through the conversation with the self-coaching tool. And after a while, after 20 minutes, after the whole conversation or in between, the coach is going to um, understand um, by observation where he needs to question the coaching and, and, and what would be the useful feedback to give to his coachee in order to, you know, augment the, the awareness and the reflection of the coachee. Um, and a third use case for coaches is to use such a technology after uh, human coaching sessions to follow up with people and enable coaches to keep reflecting, to keep practicing the questioning after the goal they have formulated uh, with the human coach. So imagine yourself as a coach with your coaches. Your coachee may have formulated a good outcome or may have come to a very good awareness about the, the situation that he's or she's facing. And with such a technology, your coachee is able to, on a daily basis or weekly basis, keep stepping back and reflecting in front of the, the outcome and the situation. Yeah, this was the big trigger for me when I developed my software application for coaches is how I can support my clients in between coaching session without interfering with their own sense of accountability. How can I um, make sure that they keep this huge insight and keep working on that and finding a way to integrate it, change behaviors, um, so um, that that was one of the reasons and it speaks to me and makes sense. So we have lots of comments here. Uh, I will start reading them. Timmy Gleason, this is an observation, she said. I would imagine that people who have to work alone but are extroverted thinking or socially uh, gregarious within their introverted personality would experience experience higher productivity because they are able to discuss and explore their thoughts with someone. Moti Cops, uh, she said where I can uh, get the app. She is curious if she can download the app. Okay, so I heard two things. I heard, you know, the, the, the link to um, people that are alone or introverts. Um, that's actually one of the one of the video that is available on YouTube uh, talks about actually a, a person that works alone um, a lot on a daily basis and is using the technology to 
put words on things that, you know, that, that are challenging for him and actually increase his proactivity and his confidence to be able to be more creative into the project that he's running. So that kind of give a bit of insight to what you just said, Vanya, about the, you know, the, the, the loneliness or the uh, introversion of people. Mm -hmm. And when you say where you can get the app, um, so it's not a mobile app. We have a web app. And if you go on the pocketconfident.com uh, website, mm -hmm. there is a sign-up process where we can uh, work with teams uh, and managers um, to set up a free trial so that they can start to use it um, inside the team. And we also invite coaches uh, to contact us directly so that we can understand how they want to use this technology and we, we can make it available to them. Thank you. So let's read on the chat box. We have lots of comments here. Uh, I'm interested to know this is Moti again, to know, uh, as your title indicates, how AI is influencing our coaching. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the, way, the way we're approaching the work of AI, so basically, you know, let, let's just define it a little bit because AI is a very big word uh, with a lot of hype around. Uh, let's talk mm -hmm. about machine learning and let's talk about natural language processing, right? Um, that are the main technologies that are going to be put into these kind of technologies, especially in chatbots, because everything is about language and it's about words. Um, so the way we work on it is, is actually to not have the technology um, influence. So if we can talk about an influence, I will tell you about how we are going to use um, the coach's language uh, to transform step by step the real-time questions that are going to be used into our technology. So this would be um, the simplest, uh, most direct um, and best answer, response to this question. We are going to use technology um, to pick up, you know, on the language of the coachee, of the individual, so that we can increase the impact of the questioning uh, based on um, based on the words that people use, based on the context, based on the topic, uh, based on you know, the, 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 the structure of the language. So that's how we're going to influence the questioning, but we are not going to use technology to um, influence anything else. So I, I think you know, this, this question is very tricky for a specific reason, because when we question people, we can influence their minds, right? So there is research available where we have seen that the way salespeople, for instance, question people, they can influence um, the purchase, right? So yeah. we are aware of that. I think it's important that I mention it. We're actually now, you know, developing with a, uh, an academic partner our own research for questioning. But the goal is to only, um, you know, to use AI and to use technology so that that AI will only serve the purpose of the individual, the individual that is questioning himself or herself in a way to step back, become aware of their own bias and basically reframe or reformulate the outcomes so that they can um, increase the, you know, the impact and the quality of the outcomes. So that's basically how I would frame my response to this question. Great, thank you. So the next one uh, in the comments is Vicky Rossetti. This is very intriguing to me and I will definitely check out your website. I totally agree in the importance of questioning and questions. My question is how does the technology determine which questions to ask an individual at a given time? Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, I like the question. We are, um, we are using our coaching expertise. So, I, you know, I would say we are using uh, protocols or coaching methods that, you know, every one of us, you know, each of you guys as coaches know. Um, and so we are using many different um, types of asking of questions. We're creating synonyms, you know, we are um, based, based, on, um, based on the protocol of coaching. So, for instance, if we talk about if we want to create you know, context, if we want to question the situation, if we want to question the feelings of the person, if we want to question the identity, if we want to question the environments, right? So there are, in coaching, there are many different dimensions of the individual that can be questioned. So we are looking at all these different dimensions. Um, we're making our own research on these dimensions and we are creating questions that we will teach uh, the technology, technology. Um, so that the right question can be triggered based on what the person is talking about. Yes, 
Um, so the next question is, um, do coaches type in or re really say their problems in, own, in their own words or do they elect out of a list of possible problems? Yeah, that's a, yeah, thank you for asking this question. I think it's the, this is the challenge that we're all going to have with technology. Um, and so the only response I can provide here is that we are at the beginning of building this technology and we are going to put, you know, um, reasonable amount of, you know, efforts to understand um, the honesty of users, if I may say. So it's a very good question because that, that's a challenge that we need to work on. Um, so far, and based on the qualitative feedback that we have from people, we can understand that they use it in the right way because they have benefits, you know, out of using the technology. Um, but I really like this question. And I think that we, we have to develop specific processes and protocols um, to understand whether, you know, X type of person is going to be honest uh, and truthful in the way um, they talk, um, if they hide things. So we will be working on, you know, the semantics, the language, and the analysis of the body language. Yeah, the, the technology and, and to be able to read the body language if it's with video. That for okay. instance, or to look at specific behavioral uh, data patterns. or metadata patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, silences, the speed of writing, the speed of talking. Right, there are many things that we can study, and we we have to look at these elements to really understand um, how. Uh, the most, you know, um, the, 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 the most engaged users or the most uh, truthful, you know, users, you know, will talk to the machine compared to those that maybe have uh, less benefit. So that will be a continuous research. Yes. So um, Moti uh, says that she's confused. Can a coach play the same role as the robot? Uh, probably from your example, when you gave that the coach is observing the interaction between client and the system so inside the in between so inside the human coaching session right during yeah. the coaching session i per se i i assume okay. that what she's asking yeah so the question is funny um the question is um can the coach play the same role as the robots mm -hmm. uh i would say yes <laughs> the thing is, I would say yes, right? Because this is what all coaches do today, right? They, they play this role of asking good questions, going through the protocols, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there is one thing that is interesting of why, you know, using this technology inside a human coaching session is because as a coach, so based on your level of expertise, the number of hours you have, and maybe the, the ease, you know, that you have in a, in a specific coaching session, what's interesting is that you can use technology to take a meta position. And so you can let go your coachee and you can observe everything about the body or everything about the conversation and where, you know, the, the time of answer and where maybe one of the questions is actually triggering something. So here, I think it's not about, um, I think it's about helping some coaches to be able to take these meta positions to increase the level of observation. Um, and the question of, can the coach play the role of the robots? I said, yes. But I would like, you know, if we just change this question the other way around and we say, can the robot play the role of the coach to a certain extent? So I'm not going to tell you, you know, that I think that the technology is going to replace completely the coaches because this is not the intention and the way we are uh, going into coaching with technology. Uh, I actually believe or we believe with my team that technology is going to augment the coaching mm -hmm. activity, the coaching industry, because first is going to give many more opportunities for people to access coaching and educate themselves about coaching so that we understand more things about themselves and so that we want to talk to a human coach technology will potentially handle a specific part and very repetitive part of the human coaching and technology so we leave to human coaches the opportunity to augment themselves to develop more to focus more to spend more time on the, the, unique, um, the unique coaching personality that every human coach has because every human is different. So that's, that's basically the piece, of, uh, the piece of insight that I wanna share also in this call that you know, potentially technology will increase and augment 
these coaching capabilities and coaches using technology will focus more and more on developing these a truly human coaching power that they have and basically delegate the most repetitive uh, processes to technology. Thank you. Thank you. So Linda John uh, is asking, how does AI distinguish between different goals? I can see the same or almost the same set of questions being used as a coach moves from one situation to another. Um, so the same set of questions would be appropriate. Can I AI distinguish this? Okay, so how can AI or how can technology distinguish in between different goals? Between different goals is the first right? piece of yeah. the question, yeah. Yeah, so well when we look at so when we look at goals, they are basically we look at language and we look at sentences, right? So um when we observe a goal, we can see sometimes inside, we can see that there is a, there is an object, there is a subject that is mentioned, there is a topic, or we can also see, especially what's very interesting is to see a specific structure of this goal. Um, so when we look at one coachee going through many different conversations or through time, then we can see that the structure of this goal is going to change. The goal, when the goal is reframed, we can see that the goal is shorter. We can see that the goal is longer. We can see that maybe there, there, there are more uh, action verbs. Uh, we can see that maybe there is more emotional related, you know, um, words. So that's that's basically um, how I would say, you know, a human coach would do. We can look at what is changing into this goal, and we can look at what is the difference. And basically, based on the difference of this goal, we can generate a new question that is going to prompt the individual to step back in front of this goal and have a further um, either cognitive or emotional reflection about this goal to take the goal to the next stage. The or next potentially stage. Pause, pause, take the goal to, to the daily life and come back you know, with this goal with a follow-up conversation and to see the difference again later on. Great. Um, so we have um, comments that thank you, great answers, uh, great interesting, great response. And we have in a Q&A uh, some comment from Marian. Um, businesses that are exploring, uh, exploring coaching for their organization, choosing an application that is cheaper and easier to use seems an obvious outcome. Leaves out human coach. Um, this is her comment um if you wanna yeah of course well i i, I think the observation is pretty fair and, and and very good to make i think we should talk about that um there is no way to provide coaching to more people if we don't train more coaches or if we don't um if the organization is not basically purchasing the services of more coaches, right? So if we want to accelerate um, the speed of change, or if we want to provide, co pro provide coaching education to more people, actually the use of a cheaper, right? An affordable a technology, an affordable tool is potentially a very good response to making, you know, to educate more people about coaching and make coaching more available into an organization so that more people we, we would be receptive, more people will qualify for coaching. Um, and so the organization will want to invest more and more in coaching. So that's basically the, the vision in, you know, with which um, I'm, I'm going into the, uh, into the world with the coaching technology. I believe that if we use technology to help organization um, extend um, the, the, you know, the access of coaching in an organization, we will create coaching cultures and more coaches will be able to practice coaching into the, the organization. It's going to become, you know, um, a standardized practice, uh, which is not yet the case. It's only available to 2% of the company. A lovely vision. Um, I'm, I'm in for that. <laughs> so uh, how much does it cost? Sherry is asking. So um, we are, so it really depends how we work. Right now, for instance, we are taking you know on, on a custom project with organizations. So that's something that is based on you know the uh, the the way the organization the organization wants to use our technology. Otherwise, when we go with individuals with coaches, um, it really depends. You know, we have an offering for three months, for six months, for one year. 
and it, it can go from you know 40 bucks to um, you know 60 bucks a month for instance uh, with uh, x amount of users on a daily basis um, on a monthly basis actually excuse me so i'd be more than happy to provide you know further insights on on this offering that we have um, so we can we can get in touch by email uh, i think that's the the simplest Yes, we will provide your information afterwards uh, for sure. Linda Johnson uh, says, interesting and great response. I totally see AI as augmenting coaching and letting great coaches really get to the uh, tougher and deeper levels. Um, me personally, I would like to hear more from you uh, how you can um, use this per se tool for in a team coaching setting because for me team coaching is uh, my next passion uh, after moving from one-on-one -on -one, i think there is much bigger impact when you work in teams um, and as your vision is to incorporate coaching in the whole organization and shift the culture to be coaching culture through the product that you develop, how you see this particular tool used in a team coaching? Well, today there are more and more distributed teams. People are busy; they travel. They are, you know, they um, there is more, um, you know, well-being um, kind of notion that is being, you know, developed into into the organization. So people do some home, remotely. you know, home office. Remotely, uh, yeah. They, they work remotely or they want to have more time for themselves. So um, it means that we are, you know, distributing the, the, the dynamics of a team. And so that's, that's one aspect. Another aspect, for instance, is when we think about the fact that a, a manager um, can be extremely busy uh, and can also have, you know, you know, personal, personal things that sometimes make things difficult, you know, to coach a person. So it's, it's very difficult to imagine that every manager um, can become a coach because sometimes there is not enough distance in between the coach um, and in between the manager and the team members. Um, and then there's this big issue of being trained as a manager to be able to act as a, you know, to be able to act as a coach or to use good coaching. Um, so, so the way this technology is used into the setup of a team is to enable in the same time, in the same day, in the same week, in the same months, right. Or in the same year, is to be able to have, to put in the hands of every team member, the manager included, a self-coaching tool that would enable each team member to self-coach before important meetings, uh, when there is um, a lack of focus, when there's a lack of confidence, when there's a tension in between, in the team or in between two team members. So imagine the future of work, you know, and the future of, uh, of working together. It means that when there is, something that is happening either on the individual basis or the collective basis, the technology will be able to enable, we enable people to self-coach and understand what it is they need to put attention on, what it is they need to change or how they can behave in order to maximize um, the time uh, with the team members. Um, so, you know, the different use cases that I've been presenting earlier in the presentation, um, for instance, uh, focus and priorities, decision making, pre and post learning, uh, onboarding, all these use cases that are part of a team setup, um, this technology is going to accelerate, facilitate and support um, the dynamic of a team because everyone will be able to train the coaching skills. Um, and so the, the whole communication, the mindset, the culture of a team is going to be improved by the use of such a self-coaching technology. Great. Um, we don't have any more questions in the chat uh, box, so I will um, keep uh, asking my questions. <laughs> so how, how do you see, we, we talk a lot about the combination and partnership between AI um, and coaching, coaches, but Overall, how do you see the industry moving as a whole? As a whole, we there's a lot of um, there's a lot of money being poured into the learning and development, into the trainings. Um, and today, you know, one of the I think one of the 
important trend is how we are enabling people to integrate the learning that is being provided, how we enable people to um, make sense at an individual level of what is being provided, how they can be the actor of that learning, how you know, each of us uh, workers um, can take a learning and create a personal outcome in a way that it touches our belief system and our value system so that we can anchor integrate the the, the, the learning and we can take it forward you know with the right level of motivation uh, with the right you know level of achievements with the right um, accountability and with the right responsibility so the way um, the way I see the industry moving for instance in the training is to have this coaching conversation and coaching methods that are going to be used in between the different training times um, and being used whether you know uh, when when people travel when people are busy um, at work or for instance you know outside of work for specific type of learning and, and trainings so i see you know technology uh, being part of a very you know kind of modular um, and you know all these little conversations will be positioned uh, throughout the whole learning process of people um, so that's how for instance i see uh, the whole training and learning and development industry moving and bedding more of these coaching conversations to help people create these personal learnings, create these options and improve their, their motivations. Um, and um, I also see um, more individuals or you know, coaches, using, um, coaches using technology to actually handle large group um, of coaches within the organization. I was, I was talking with a coach, uh, I think, you know, two weeks ago, and he was telling me um, how hectic his planning is, for instance, when he's trained to coach a group of 50 people in the organization, um, and when his organization is actually trained to push for more people. And he was telling me, um, not everyone um, is receptive to coaching, so, you know, I'd like to spend more time with the people that are receptive, and I would love to have, you know, this technology to be able to, you know, make different types of work with people that potentially are not that receptive. So I, I see, you know, I see coaching, training and learning being um, positively and heavily augmented uh, by coaching technologies because it's going to enable each individual to better relate to themselves in the context of transition and transformation, which is the key of coaching. Thank you. We have uh, two questions. Linda John. Uh, can coaches get transcript or records of their session with the AI? No, so today we don't. So the only, the only transcript, the only conversational data that could be provided is when the coachee, so the user, chooses to share the outcome, to share the, the summaries that is being sent to him or her. So that's, that's how the, the coach uh, could actually get the, the, the conversation or some information. That's on the decision of the coachy and I think you know we think this is the most important because um, the coachy has the right to say yes or no you know and to decide whether he wants to keep the conversation for himself for a specific um, situation or context yeah we touch on the big topic of ethics here yeah. thank you so questions are coming um, the next one is I just went to your website and there is a web oh. app yeah. So, Vanya, excuse me, excuse me a second. I'm just seeing that I, I maybe I didn't understand the question uh, that Linda uh, Johnson was asking. So she said that the question was meant for the coach to get the trans uh, to get the transcript as a learning tool, not so much the coach. So yes, we basically provide uh, coaches um, with summaries uh, of the conversation so they can keep a part of the transcript and work with it um, after the coaching session. Okay, Sorry, yes, that, that's the added to her initial questions. Yeah. Okay, so um, Sherry is asking, she went to the website, is there, uh, this is a sample or is there a real tool you're offering for sale? Or what she saw on the website is the actual web app? Yeah, no, so we, so we have this uh, right now, we're using this web app. Uh, so this can, can be made available to people and behind we have several programs that we are making available uh, for sale. So right now, if you go on the website, of course, you're going to have, um, you're not going to go much, uh, you know, much further. You're going to go through a, you know, a specific onboarding process, but it's not, it's basically 
it could be called as a sample, as you said, it's not the whole, um, the whole group of programs that we have behind the, the tool. Okay, and Sherry is asking, is the data entered by the coaches store or your, um, on your server or on their own computer or cell phone? Yes, so it can be used. Um, it's mobile responsive. So this web interface uh, works, you know, pretty fine on uh, laptops, tablets, and phones. Um, so basically it can be used anywhere on any device. Where the data is stored. Is I and think where did the data is stored? Mm -hmm. uh, the the data. data stored. Yeah, so we yeah. you know we that. we work with uh, with Microsoft and Azure. Mm -hmm. So we store our data um, in the US right now, Azure with specific um, security protocols. We encrypt and we work on depersonalization. Um, thank you. And there is a question: How do we get a hold of you to start using the software with the group? or as an individuals? Mm, so I'm not sure, yeah, I'd like to understand the question. So what do how we do we group? get a hold? Yes, how they can uh, connect with you and start using it with a group or individual? You can go through the sign up process on the homepage um, and through the first question that asks about what kind of coaching um, issues you want to solve, or coaching challenge you know you want to handle, then provide some information so that we can integrate that in the way um, we will provide you the technology. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. It was an uh, amazing uh, and wonderful session today and pleasure to have you as my guest. And I'm looking forward for future collaboration. Before I hand it back to Karen, if you want to say something final, um, please do so. Oliver. Yes, thank you very yeah. much for, for inviting <laughs> me today. That was great. I, you know, I was, I was glad to be able to share about, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this attention, uh, the vision that we have for, for technology and coaching and to answer all the questions. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm available um, if you want to reach out and to answer more questions. Um, so I was very glad to have this opportunity to uh, share a piece of our work. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for uh, everyone that joined us today. I highly appreciate. Please follow me on LinkedIn. Any questions, any suggestions, or any interesting topic related to technology and coaching you want to hear more about, you want to learn more about, or me to invite particular guests, please let me know. And um, I'm looking forward to see you in uh, June. Karen is going to tell you when is my next session. Um, and thank you for uh, wonderful uh, learning today. It was awesome. It was awesome, you guys. Thank you both. That was fantastic. I think, um, you know, you, there's, a, there's some nervousness out there about AI and how it'll affect coaches from our stand, the standpoint of as to be frank, our, our own profession, right? But what I think we both shared today is that this is a tool and it's meant to, I love, I think Oliver, Olivia, you hit it on the head for me when you talked about as an individual coach, being able to coach more people, to work with teams and to not be a complete stress case when that happens. Um, and Linda mentioned it as well. We get to then go deeper with that, you know, maybe manager who we're coaching and then that manager can affect how about that ripple effect, which is what we all want from our coaching and transformation. So very exciting stuff. Um, I think you alleviated a lot of fear today and AI is here to stay, you guys. So and my encouragement is to find ways where you can embrace the technology because it's, um, it's definitely, I think, on the forefront and happy to have people like you who contribute to it. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I was, I was just going to take the, uh, you know, the, the illustrate the metaphor of, of the river. You know, we can only no. go and swim in, in the sense of the river, in the direction yeah. of the river. And I think that, you know, AI will develop and we should all step into that and together with the coaches work on it to make something that is going to serve humanity and be good. Otherwise, yeah. um, many different, you know, things will happen with AI. So I, I guess we have to jump on it and we have to uh, make it good. Um, yeah. That's my point. Yeah, we have to go with that flow, right? Yeah, exactly. love it. Love it. <laughs> Everything okay, Vaughn? 
Yes, there are just few attendants left, but you can still um, say what is uh, next to Coming come up. for our chapter, yeah. Yeah, let me share what we have going on, you guys. Next week, we have Mona in our monthly book writing session on the 20th. And we also have, um, coming up on March 26th, we have David Miller. Let me get our thing here for you guys. And he's our next webinar, um, or excuse me, the one after our monthly webinar is with David Miller. And then we have a really exciting chapter of meeting this month. JP Morgan, no relation to the bank. Our president wants to make sure that we let you guys know that. Um, he's no, he's not fun. coming. Yeah, no, that, that JP is not coming. The one that we have is much more fun. He's from Malibu and he will help you be the best person that you are to influence your coaching business and to help you, you help you uh, have your coaches be the coaches be the best that they can be. Whew. Got that one out. Um, <laughs> so we're very much looking forward to having him with us. And again, we have a couple more events that you guys can see there in March and April. And then coming up at the end of April is ICW Week, International Culture Week. So lots going on. Hopefully we'll get to see all of you in the next few events. Thank you so much for your participation today. We really appreciate your support. You'll all be receiving a survey after this in which we um, love to share at our board meetings to figure out how we can best support our Orange County coaches. So special thanks to Vanya and Olivier. Thank you guys so much. Tech Talks will be again on June 4th. It's not on this calendar, but that's when Vanya's next Tech Talk for coaches will be. Love you guys. Thanks for being Thank here, everybody. You. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay. It's me, you, and someone else. Paul. <laughs> Paul okay, Paul there we go. <laughs> Paul is last. Okay, here we go. Okay, cool. That was good. Should we turn up, end it up? Oh, yeah, probably. I, I will. I will call you. Okay. So, bye. bye.